What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Casper. The man to my left is Tony Hager. Thanks for joining us for another edition of GWN. Competing inside Jesse Auditorium, fifth-ranked Missouri picked up a big early season victory on Sunday, topping sixth-ranked Virginia Tech 23-19. Here to talk about the recent early season showdown is Missouri Tigers head coach, Brian Smith. Coach, welcome back to GWN. How are you? Doing great. How you doing, Scott? I'm good. Did it look like... Um, 23-19 on paper, analyzing uh, uh, analyzing a match as you might prior to? You know, Virginia Tech is really strong, and I knew it was going to be a tough battle, and it was. You know, it was back and forth, tough matches. They opened up with a win, but we came back and got a pin at 33 with a freshman in the first match, so with Jaden Ironman. But it was one of those where we jumped out and got a big lead, but then uh, gave up 12 points. You know, it's 74 and 84, one of them being an injury, and they were right back in it. So it got a little nerve-wracking there at the end. But, you know, on paper, I had it going a very close to me that there were a lot of tight matches, a lot of highly ranked wrestlers, too, going at it. When uh, when you run out of score at that point, you were at, uh, I think, 20 to 3. When you run out of score like that, do, is, is uh, an athlete's mind in danger of saying, oh, we've got this one, we've got this one? And then the, and, and I don't think, yeah, I don't think our team did that. I really don't think our, you know, we just they focus on their matches. We were in a at seventy four. We were in a tough battle with, you know, Epperly, who's ranked second in the country, and I think at the point at that point it was three nothing, where he gives up a takedown and then fights it too long and gets and gives up the fall, and instead of just bailing out and it's a three two match, but. It's just one of those things, and then Willie Nicholas in the first minute of the match just gets hurt, and I didn't think it was smart for him to continue, so we didn't. But, you know, I wasn't concerned with the dual meet. I was more concerned with, you know, Willie's health. So if that was, you know, so 12 points, bang it, they're right back in it. So it made it interesting. But I, I knew we had, you know, Jaden Cox coming up, who had a tough match too, that I knew it was coming down to that match. And it did, and Jaden won a hard-fought match. I want to go back to 49 if I can. At 49, you have a fine young man, uh, LaVon Mays. Can you talk to us about that matchup with Solomon Chisco? It was a good match. I think he had four and six in the country going at it, and it was everything it was supposed to be. And they were battling back and forth, but LaVon was able to get the, the early takedown, and then with the match, I think it was at 3-2 or whatever it was, he may have a riding time too. He puts it away with a takedown at the end that I was real pleased with. You know, instead of just hanging on to that lead and circling away from him, he uh, got to his single leg again and scored on it. And, and that's where I'm seeing him really improve. He used to have this, you know, he still has this great double, but he's added to it where he's getting to his single a lot because people won't give him his double. And he's capitalizing on that, that he's taking what people are giving him. You know, Coach, we're not going to be able to talk about all your, your athletes, but one in particular I do want to mention, at least have you talk about him, is Joey LaValle. Uh, your 57-pound uh, redshirt junior, I like where he started. I mean, he jumped out to a 10-2 lead after the first period, and that gave him uh, the edge in the straight uh, second straight major decision of the year. What what's what's going on with the valley? He seems to be wrestling like a traditional house of fire. <laughs> well, he's practiced that way. His attitude, I think, in the middle of the towards the end of it was the end of the season last year. I sat him down and just say, hey you're just kind of going through the motions here and you know, it, it could be a wasted of a red shirt year. I want you to make the most of this and you've got to change. And I asked him to come back with like a list of things that he's going to change in his lifestyle and his practice and everything. And, and he came back and brought me these 10 things and he has done that every day. He's lived by those things and followed that every day. And even in the beginning of the season, some of my assistants were, I, thinking, you know, is he going to keep doing this? Will he keep it up? And I said, I think he will. I think he's really motivated by this, and it just keeps happening. And now he's practicing that way every day, and it becomes consistent. And He's going out and wrestling with a lot of energy and scoring a lot of points because of the way he's doing things. Tiger Style Wrestling is for real. Brian Smith has been our guest in the Nike Hot Seat today. Brian, thanks for the time. Thanks, Scott. I should have made you pick a winner last week, Tony, but be honest with me. Did you have Missouri coming out on top in this one? Well, I think every single time on Takedown Radio I, I pick against Missouri. I feel like I'm always against them, but this one I saw them winning. 
with with Virginia Tech having to go on the road against Northern Iowa on Friday, this is not easy to do to go back down to Missouri and, and top top matchup. So I I was not surprised to see Missouri come out on top. I I I have a hard time believing you'd pick against black and gold with any school, but <laughs> I wasn't surprised by Missouri. I was surprised that Jaden Cox barely eked out a victory. He's under a lot of pressure to go out and dominate, and he really didn't do that. Well. It, I think Jaden Cox will be fine. He, he has to retool his mind going from freestyle to folk style. But, you know, wrestling is wrestling. At the end of the day, this was not a, a, an easy matchup for him to, to get past. Hot was – he's the top five-ranked wrestler, top three-ranked wrestler. So that's not an easy uh, victory to just walk through. How about Jaden Ironman? I mean, that dude is going to be a – Forced to be reckoned with. Yeah, how, how big was that fall in that duel for the Tigers? <laughs> Absolutely huge. That place went crazy. Ironman is deadly. He's deadly on top. He has an ability to get his legs in on the left side, on the right side, really easy. As soon as he gets that takedown, boom, those legs are going in, and he's looking to for you to make a mistake. He wants you to kind of roll around with him. If you do that, you're going to get on your back, and you're going to get put four, four points, four, four near fall. Well, battle at the birthplace and more college wrestling highlights after this short time out. You're watching GWN, powered by McBride Max. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made-from-scratch pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie. Well, more than 16,000 fans made it to High Point Solutions Stadium last Saturday for the highly anticipated battle at the birthplace. Competing in front of the second largest crowd in NCAA dual meet history, Rutgers and Princeton each picked up five victories, but bonus points were ultimately the difference for the Scarlet Knights. Here to talk about the event, the action on the mat, Rutgers head coach Scotty Goodell. Coach, how are you? Good, Scott. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Tremendous start to the season, uh, four and O. Oh, you uh, you invited Princeton to High Point Solutions Stadium, where you and your team defeated the Tigers in a closely fought battle, nineteen sixteen. It was the first ever battle at the birthplace, presented by your friends at Autoland. Talk a little bit about putting the event together before we talk about the event itself. Uh, yeah, it was about six, seven months in the making. Just uh, obviously, you know, we have a good relationship with the guys at Princeton and we deal with them a lot. They're 20 minutes down the road and just thought, you know, that would really help in making this a big draw, kind of turn it into a, a New Jersey thing. And then, of course, all the surrounding states, but really worked hard with, with Coach Ayers and, and Dubuque and Sean Gray over there. And they did their share and were willing to put in a lot of time and contact all the coaches in the area, whether they be high school coaches, junior high rec coaches, and try to just get the most people as possible. So there, it was really a group effort. There's a lot that went on behind the scenes, you know, Jeff Brown and Lisa Carone, our marketing department, you know, our facility people. Uh, we had meetings every week for the last seven months. So um, it was something that went off without a hitch. We got really, really lucky with the weather, obviously seven hours later, it was snowing. Um, it was 62 degrees, beautiful day. Made for a great atmosphere. The, the play, you know, was about 16,000 16, plus. So it was a, you know, great event. Our people did a great job putting it on, and 
and we were excited to be a part of it. In the end, the difference really between the two squads that split the uh, the dual 5-5, the end was bonus points, Coach, and this is something I've known from you. You are always uh, encouraging your athletes to score and score and score again. Bonus points mean the difference at the end of the day. Let's face it, that was the split for you guys. Yeah, it was really, really important, and, you know, we got upset. You know, maybe it wasn't an upset in, in, in people's eyes across the country, but anytime time Ashall loses for us, it's something that, you know, we better we better buckle up because you don't know how it's going to affect everybody. That's our guy. That's our leader. So when he lost, it was important to somewhere along the line, not only find a win, but find a couple bonus points in, in, in those matches. And we got, um, we got a really for us an upset at 57 with John Van Brill, and then he gets a major decision. And then Richie Lewis, we're expecting a win, but he gets a major decision. Of course, Nick Ravina ends it with, you know, wrestling another nationally ranked guy. They're kind of ranked very close to each other. Ian Baker and, it's a tech fall, which you don't see a whole heck of a lot at the college level. So it's a great effort by Nick. It was, again, it was about scoring points and continue pouring on and getting those opponents to that break point where you can split and just continue to go. That's what those guys did. And, and we try to get all 10 guys to do that every single time out. It's a hard thing to do. But great dual meet, very uh, highly contested. And uh, you're right, the difference was our bonus points. The Rutgers bad boys getting it done, and I like it, man. Big 10 action just around the corner. But first, grapple at the Garden. That's next Sunday. Scarlet Knights will face off against the eighth-ranked Cornell Big Red. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's something that's obviously circled on our calendar. It's a big event for us. We love wrestling at the Garden. Cornell makes it special. They're one of the best programs in the country. Um, so we look forward to it. It's a great challenge. But, again, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity for not only our guys but our program. And, and we wrestled them really, really well last year. And we kind of felt that catapulted us uh, to having a really strong season. And the same thing goes, you know, uh, goes for this weekend. But we got to be better. we got to be better in all things. It's, uh, you know, not only top, bottom, neutral, but we got to be better in conditioning and, and the mind game and all that good stuff. So, uh, again, a great challenge. Still early in the year, but it's something we look forward to every year. Absolutely. Coach Scott Goodell has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today, reviewing what ended up becoming a very close bout between Princeton and his Scarlet Knights. 1916, the final at High Point Solutions Stadium. Coach, did you ever think that somebody would be announcing the wrestling score from the event that took place at High Point Solution Stadium. No, it's kind of it's kind of weird, you know, it's uh we coach Leon Artis who as you know has been with me since day 1. I just before the national anthem I said this is this is crazy. Look what's going on right now and and I remember our first dual meet 10 years ago there was 15 people in the stands and and uh, uh you know, we had a clock breakdown. We had to go out to run to a truck to get a another makeup makeshift clock we were doing it with hand watches and flip cards and and here we are now you know 10 years later wrestling in front of 16,000 people so it was a special day I thank our fans I thank the New Jersey wrestling community and of course our administration everybody who worked their tail off to put this together just did an outstanding job coach we'll see you on on uh, Saturday most likely in the Big Apple looking forward to the competition on Sunday we'll look forward to it all right Scott appreciate you having me my man I mean, this one was a lot closer than I expected, Tony. You have to give a lot of credit to Princeton. Yeah, Princeton came up big in some some swing matches. 174 pounds. John Scheffler came up big with them, that overtime win, that takedown at the end. Matt Matt Kolodzik, you know, Kolodzik gets that rubber match win over Anthony Ashnall. So real, real great finish for uh, Princeton. I think they got to be happy with that finish. Wrestlers are never happy if they don't win. So well, it is early in the season, but. I'm going to consider Matthew Klodzik a serious title contender. Too much? <sighs> Oof. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I and mean, these guys have some history together. So anytime you're going up against somebody that you've wrestled before, you kind of know their style, know their tendencies. But, you know, this weight class really is wide open at 141 pounds. My guy at this weight class is Joey McKenna from Stanford. Right now, he is my favorite. Lot, there's a long, long season to go, but right now it's all McKenna. What about John Van Brill, 14-3 major, and that was the difference maker in the duel? Yeah, Van Brill had a sick outside single to a shin tilt to the back for a four-point near fall, I think it was. Van Brill got the major with 15 seconds left in the clock, and you just can't give up those points in a huge duel like this if you're on the bottom. 
you're probably going to get beat. You're already down almost by a major. You can't give up those few little points to give up that major. Did you say oof just a little bit ago? Oof. 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 Okay, yeah. I just want to be clear. After the break, we've got more matches and a little bit more of Tonyisms. You're watching DWN, powered by Adidas Wrestling. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Welcome back, fans. Just because it's a holiday weekend doesn't mean wrestlers get to take time off. Here are the must-watch matches of the weekend. Iowa State's Gabe Marino against Bryce Meredith of Wyoming. Cyclones are on the road against the Cowboys. Meredith on paper is the fave, but he's taken a loss already on the year. Thoughts on how this match will go down, Tony? Well, I wasn't for sure if we're going to be able to see Moreno this early in the season. Got a call from KJ. He's going to be in the lineup. So um, if he's back 100%, I like Moreno here. Both of these guys have similar styles. Meredith has gone down already this season, so they're both funky from their feet. So if Moreno is 100%, I like Moreno to get it done in real close fashion. I got a top 15 matchup going down. I got to believe it's going to be Oklahoma State Cowboy Joe Smith against the Minnesota Golden Gopher Jake Short. These two have wrestled similar opponents, but not each other. Who do you like here? Yeah, it's kind of a question mark whether Joe Smith will get the nod or not, but I think if this match does go down, this is probably the highlight of the weekend. Uh, Joe Smith is a top three guy in the country right now. Short keeps things close, um, but the momentum with the Cowboys at this point in the duel, I have to go with Joe Smith here. 8-4, 8-5 match. Wow. Let's stick with the Cowboys versus Gophers at 184. We'll have a top 10 matchup. Preston Weigel of Oakey State and Brett Farr of Minnesota. Far on pace Paper has the upper hand. Thoughts on Wiggle's defense or chances? Uh, Wiggle won the he won the Big 12 tournament. He made the round of 12 in uh, New York City. Record was 19 and 12 last season, so not really impressive, not flashy. You know, so this will be uh, one of those matches where I feel like he's going to be able to keep it close, but Far is going to be able to get it done in crunch time. Real close decision here, but ultimately going to be a good match. Well, another fun match to keep your eye on in this duel will be Oklahoma State's Kate Brock versus Minnesota's Mitch McKee. Both wrestlers are young and looking to prove something to themselves and to each other. What are your thoughts? Yeah, McKee is off to a, a great start here. Lots of buzz around him as a freshman, as a recruit. He's a true freshman here in that lineup. You don't see that very often, especially for the Gophers. He's wrestled South Gross a couple times already, taken loss to them. So, uh, you know, Kate Brock is really the guy that maybe has more buzz around him at Okie State. I think he's a top five guy at the end of the season. So I'm going with Cade Brock here. All right, now let's head to the Garden. Rutgers, Ken Theobald should wrestle Joseph Galasso of Cornell inside that famed arena on Sunday. Both are on the outside looking in, Tony, at 149. What are your thoughts? Yeah, these guys, like you said, looking inside here, on trying to, trying to get that All-American status here early in the season. I like Theobald, though. You know, he's a top 12, top 10 guy. But both are looking to for those signature wins. They don't really have it right now. So this this grapple at the Garden over the holidays, it, I'm really kind of curious to see how wrestlers react to that. I like Theobald, though, 9-5, to five, pretty close match. 
All right, we need to take quick time out. Up next, we'll talk a little more about the grapple and more. That's next on Global Wrestling News, thanks to Cookie's Barbecue Sauce. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. In this town, there's only one pizza joint that has your best interests in mind. They make every single pie from scratch. The freshest ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. Oh, and if your engine's running a quart low, well, they can take care of that too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get free breadsticks with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back. We talked about some of the individual bouts to watch over the weekend. What about, let's say, top five events to watch? Yeah, number one, easily the grapple at the garden. Fifth time this event has hit New York City. 20 college programs hit the historic arena. Every year that you go there, you come back with some stories. I mean, Isaiah Bird. I mean, what else you got from New York City? It's always uh, something special, and that's thanks to the people at the Garden, a, a very talented team, all the great coaches and athletes as well. Yeah, so we got Cornell, Rutgers. Those are the two big Big teams that headline this event. Rutgers running off a good weekend at the Battle at the Birthplace. Really starting to gain some momentum. Mm -hmm. Cornell was almost upset by Buffalo. I mean, Wolf, that, I mean, if being un, beat by an unranked team, Stutzman, he's got the, that young team rolling right now. All right, this Sunday, live on the Big Ten Network, Iowa will face off against Purdue, and top-ranked Oklahoma State will face Minnesota. Who do you like in these two? Well, Oklahoma State, Iowa, two of the most storied programs in wrestling history. Don't see any upsets here on the horizon. Um, you know, the, there's really a, a not really a ton of good matchups here and there. It's just going to be kind of Oki State, Iowa really running out these duels. Okie State, there's a couple there, obviously, but Iowa's going to run through Purdue. Minnesota was nearly knocked off by South Dakota State last weekend, and it was a come-from-behind victory for Minnesota. One point separated of the two. Yeah, it was uh, to get stalled out at the end. I, I mean, Coach had got to be absolutely furious with that, uh, that finish of how that ended up. Yeah, but let's not take anything away from SDSU. Already knocked off Iowa State pretty handily, I might add. Almost beat Minnesota. I think this perhaps is a top 15 dual meet team. You know, I'm not taking anything away from South Dakota State. I mean, this if you look at the really kind of these both stories, I mean, Minnesota to be, to be the you just would not see South Dakota State maybe five, ten years ago beating Minnesota. They don't lose out on recruits, and right now they are, and it's showing up right now. Chris Bono definitely doing his job and trying to get up there with the status of a Minnesota, Iowa, et cetera. Well, Ohio State let Arizona State know that they still have a long way to go to play with the big dogs. Ohio State won six of ten, five bonus point victories included to take the duel 27-15. Thoughts on Arizona State? Yeah, first it's uh, you know it's great to see Kyle Snyder wrestle after winning the Olympics. Didn't think we would see him this early in the season. I think this duel was big for recruiting. There's no reason not to have Kyle Snyder out there. So I wasn't a hundred percent you know really surprised to see him. Arizona State does have a long ways to go. They're young. The lineup isn't a hundred percent at full strength yet. So down the road this year, I do see that this could be a closer duel. I mean, I think the coaches know it's a work in progress. Just think. A few years ago, we weren't even talking about Arizona State. Now people are shaking in their boots at the idea of having to wrestle them. All right, we're out of time. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and all of us, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching Global Wrestling News, and happy holidays, everybody.